Many people are confused about the difference between phrases and clauses. Are these different grammar items or are they just two names for the same thing? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now before we start, just remember if you have any questions at all, you just have to ask me in the comments section below and I will talk to you there. So in this lesson, we're going to learn the difference between phrases and clauses. But first, let's talk about how phrases and clauses are similar. They're similar in this way. Both of these refer to groups of words that are meaningful. Look at these examples. Near my home or Dexter won the bicycle race. You can see that these are meaningful. So one of them is a phrase and the other is a clause. Okay, so what's the difference between them? Well, the difference is this. A clause is a group of words with a subject-verb combination. So Dexter won the bicycle race is a clause because it has a subject, Dexter, and a verb, one is the past tense of win. So this is a clause. A phrase is a group of words without a subject-verb combination. So near my home is a phrase because there's no subject-verb combination. It's very simple, but keep this important difference in mind. A clause has a subject-verb combination and a phrase does not. So now let me show you some more examples so that you can learn how to easily identify phrases and clauses. All right, all the words that you see on the screen are phrases. You will notice that in all of these, there's no subject verb combination. And these examples also show the most common types of phrases. For example, my two wonderful dogs is a phrase focusing on the noun dogs. And the phrase, the tallest building in the world focuses on the noun building. So we say that these are noun phrases. What about couldn't come and will be working? Can you guess what types of phrases these are? Well, these are verb phrases because they only have verbs in them. All of these words are verbs. Similarly, we have the adjective phrases, very friendly and afraid of the dark. We say that these are adjective phrases because the focus is on friendly and afraid. The other words in these phrases are only helping the main words, and the main words are adjectives. Really fast and much quicker are adverb phrases, because the adverbs fast and quicker are the focus of these phrases. And finally, what about near the post office and on the 29th? Do you know? These are preposition phrases, because each of these tells us about a place or about time using the prepositions near and on. These are the most common types of phrases that you will come across. And once again, remember, these are phrases because they don't have a subject verb combination. So let's now look at some examples of clauses. Like I said, a clause is just like a phrase. It's a group of words. But a clause has a subject-verb combination. Now in English, there are many different kinds of clauses. But the two most important that you need to know about are independent and dependent clauses. Let's start with the independent clause. This is simply a clause that can stand alone as a sentence. For example, he ate dinner. This is a clause because it has a subject, he, and a verb, ate, past tense of eat. And it's independent because it can be a sentence on its own. So what's a dependent clause then? Well, it's a clause, that is, it has a subject-verb combination, but it cannot be a sentence by itself. For example, when James got home is a dependent clause. It has a subject, James and a verb got, but if you think about it, it's not a complete sentence. Because if I said, when James got home, you will ask, 
Okay, then what? What happened? So you see, the sentence isn't complete. So this is a dependent clause. To make it a full sentence, you have to combine it with an independent clause, such as, when James got home, he ate dinner. In this next example, please send me the report tomorrow if you can. This sentence has two clauses. Here, the first clause is independent. Please send me the report tomorrow. And the second clause is dependent, if you can. Usually, dependent clauses will have words like when, while, whenever, before, after, uh, because, if, unless, and so on. Really simple, isn't it? Okay, now I'm going to give you a small test to see if you can identify phrases and clauses correctly. Okay, on the screen, there are 10 items. And for each item, I want you to say if it's a phrase or a clause. You get bonus points if you can say what type of phrase or clause. Pause the video if you want, think about your answers, and then play the video again and check. Okay, let's discuss the answers. Number one, in the garden, is a phrase because there's no subject-verb combination. And it's a preposition phrase because it tells us about a place using the preposition in. Number two is a clause. It has a subject, Charlie, and a verb, was. This is a dependent clause because it starts with while and it's not a complete sentence. Number three is also a clause, but it's an independent clause because it could be a sentence by itself. Number four is not a clause, it's a phrase. There's no subject-verb combination. And it's a noun phrase because it focuses on the noun box. Number five is a clause and it's an independent clause. Number six is a phrase and it's an adjective phrase because the focus is on hungry. And number seven is a phrase and it's a verb phrase. Number eight is a clause and it's a dependent clause because it's not a full sentence. Number nine is a phrase, and this phrase is an adverb phrase because the focus is the adverbs slowly and steadily. And finally, number 10 is a little tricky. This is actually not one phrase or clause. This is a sentence with two clauses. The first clause, whenever I play a video game, is dependent, and the second clause it reminds me of my childhood is independent. How many of those did you get right? Let me know in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I will see you in another lesson soon.